Hello to all you beautiful, wonderful and amazing subscribers, viewers and of course, doll community members. I'm doing a special doll chat video today. Why you ask? Because, in case you haven't heard, my scene have finally returned! I'm absolutely ecstatic that my favourite doll line, what I genuinely believe, have always been the most gorgeous dolls ever made, are finally making their comeback. In a time and an era where things are remade, things are getting all sorts of live action renditions, things are getting reimaginings, which is the case with these dolls, I'm just so happy that my scene have finally joined the ranks. Because as a doll collector, being impartial now, we all know Barbie and Monster High have been Mattel's cash cows, but forget Mattel, forget MGA, forget Hasbro for a moment. I would say impartially, after Barbie, Monster High, Bratz, maybe American Girl Doll and LOL OMG, my scene was the next in line when it came to popularity. My scene was definitely the discontinued doll line people were making content of the most, discussing the most and asking for the most. So just for the fact that Mattel are giving us something really touches me. So I want to say, first of all, thank you so much to Mattel for at least acknowledging us. And this release, from what I've seen from the imagery that we're taking a look at, and I'm going to discuss, this does feel like it's Mattel's way of saying, I've seen and heard you guys, here's a little something. And we will be emphasising on the term little. Can be good, can be bad. We'll get to it in a moment. But yeah, I just wanted to first off say to all the Mycene lovers, this is our moment. We've got our girls back. Even if it's just this one-time launch, we don't know. This one-time release, actually. Um, better put. Who knows? But it's something. And that alone means a lot. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, guys. So now we're going to get on to the pros and the cons. So I'm going to start off, of course, on a positive note with the pros. And there were two things that I absolutely loved about these images. So first off, thank God they went with the original screening. I want to give a shout out to all the Mycene collectors and all collectors as a whole that prefer the sultry eyes. I sympathize with you guys and it would have been nice if they had made variants for you guys. But personally, I fell in love with the original screening. I adore the original screening. And personally, the reason why is because for me, that is the one that works the best with these dolls for any occasion. So no matter what you put them in, casual clothing, glamorous, anything really, sporty, I think these looks work well, as opposed to the sultry ones. And there are quite a few beautiful Mycene dolls with the sultry look, the post-bling look. But I think those work better for uber glam and sparkly dolls. You know, the golden bling, the... Super, I mean, there are so many freaking bling dolls, <laughs> so many lines of or collections of, of the bling bling dolls, but that's just what I've always felt. And this to me is the authentic Mycene look. It's the one I grew up seeing the most. It's the original. So I personally love that they've gone with these screenings. And that for me was the most important thing, I think, overall. So shout out to those of you that prefer the sultry ones. Would have been nice if they made, you know, variants for you guys to pick. For us to pick, but I'm just so glad that they went with these. The authentic my scene to me. And the second thing I love the most about these dolls is that each of them have their own symbol. Symbolism, of course, can be used to describe a character's personality or aesthetic, and I absolutely love it. So as we can see here, Barbie's symbol is a heart. Perhaps she's the hopeless romantic. Madison's is a butterfly, which, hmm, a little interesting. I'll get to that in a moment. And Chelsea's, perhaps the one that makes the most sense if you look at my scene's history, Chelsea's symbol is a flower. So yeah, I love that they all have their own signature symbol. And I love how each of the symbols are incorporated in their outfits. So from what we're seeing here, Barbie has a heart-shaped necklace. Madison has a sort of corset-like tube top that, that goes uh, in front of the regular one she has. And I think with Chelsea, the floral print is used in a ring. Yeah, I think she has a ring that's flower-shaped. One could also argue that the prints on the inside of her coat are floral, somewhat. Uh, but I think it's the ring. So yeah, they each have a little something, which is very beautiful. Now, let's go on to each girl individually. We'll get to the negatives in a, in a minute, or the cons in this case, in my opinion. 
So here's Barbie's doll and she is absolutely slaying. I mean, the message I get from Barbie is we put a lot of work into her and this is her comeback. And it is a comeback because they ended things, you know, if you know my scene's history, it was Kennedy. The last release was Kennedy, Nia and Chelsea, if I'm not mistaken. So Barbie was was swapped out. We all pretty much know why. It's because Mattel wanted to make my scene its own thing. Kennedy didn't have much of a personality, in my opinion. Shout out to any Kennedy lovers. Don't hate me on this. But Kennedy was, it was Barbie. It was clone Barbie. Barbie was truly the one that was supposed to be the signature blonde. So, you know, and of course Delancey as well. But back to Barbie. Yeah, I'm very happy to see that they went with her. And the crimped hair is gorgeous. First edition Barbie, the original one, because these are reimaginings of those dolls. She had wavy hair. But I like that they've done something a bit different. I like the fact that I can look at her doll and see what they were going for, but at the same time making it their own slightly, making, well, making it their own, making it a bit different. So I dig that. The jacket I dig. I think I said it when I did my first edition Barbie review years ago. That is probably the most iconic item from, you know, item of clothing of any Mycene doll, her signature jacket. So this rendition is pretty nice. Overall, the doll's giving me a bit of Perry Edwards, but that's also, you know, the little mix fan in me. I'm not going to say that they went ahead and got inspo from that. But I like it. I dig it. I like the hat. I really like the top as well. I'm impressed, Barbara. They did you well. I think they did. I think they did. Let's just hope the quality control on all of them is good. Moving on now to Chelsea. Chelsea, who is my favourite character from the original three. Hmm. So... There are things I love and things that I'm a bit mm about. Not, I don't dislike anything about her. I'm just mm, and we're going to get into it. So first off, love the fact that they used a flower print for her because if we look at Mycene's history, all the big Mycene lovers like me will know, flowers have been associated to Chelsea a lot. In, in a lot of her outfits, her club birthday dress has flowers, has floral prints. Uh, funnily enough, the Mycene stationery sets gave Noli the, the floral prints, which is it's quite funny. They kind of swapped it around. But yeah, Chelsea's known for, for those prints as well, for vintage prints, for patchwork. So I'm glad that they went with that. And I like the coat she has. The, the, the skirt's nice. Yeah, I like the skirt. And I do like the, the top. I do, however, feel a bit iffy for the fact that they've made her a bit more pink based. And, you know, Chelsea, I mean, each of them had the, the three primary colours. Barbie was red, Madison was blue, Chelsea was yellow. And this time I feel Chelsea's a lot more pink. And, and you can even see that in the glasses. So the sunglasses shouldn't be pink. They should be yellow, in my opinion. Um, and the boots, I mean, Chelsea and Madison looked stunning in boots. But these boots I'm just not feeling. But this it's a personal me thing because I know that they're similar to the ones that first edition Chelsea had. So I'm not complaining. It's just not really my thing. What I really like the most is the coat. The hairstyle looks nice too. I think I might go for Chelsea. Well, you'll have to find out. You'll have to subscribe to my channel to find out if I get any and review them. Um, of course, I'm going to try and get them. <laughs> but yeah, I might get Chelsea first. Mm. Love the inside of her coat. Love the print they went with. Yeah, that that is the, the key factor here for me. Um... And yeah, I like the fact that she has a ring. I mean, remember her shopping spree doll? It was her in trinkets. So accessories was 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 a thing for Chelsea more than the others, even. Chelsea was the funky fashion designer. So if anything, I think when you think of my scene as a whole, regardless of who your favorite character is, I think Chelsea sort of symbolizes it the most. You know, these girls in New York that go to, you know, is it thrift stores or... Flea markets, that's what I wanted to say. Flea markets, she's a fashion designer, she sketches. You know, she's the one I think overall that that symbolizes and represents my scene the best. And she was the only one that stayed there from day one till the end. But anyway, I'm happy with her doll too. Moving on now to Miss Madison. Here, unfortunately, I have a few more cons. I'm going to start off with what I love about her. The face, of course. And they gave her her signature curly hair. Love that. At a time when there were many Mycene dolls with sort of straight hair or straight hair that ended in waves, for the most part, 
Madison would come in with her curls and she would always slay. Love that. Madison, in fact, is the doll from, from many dolls that I've seen, regardless of whether it's my scene or not, that's had some of the most diverse looks. She's had short hair. She's had black hair. Some of her dolls have thick blonde highlights. Some are all brunette, thank God. Some are wavy. Some have straight hair. One has straight hair, to my knowledge, the club birthday. So she she's a doll whose hair goals, period. And I do like the fact that they decided to give her, you know, butterfly, although... When I first saw the concept art, I was a bit off because Barbie was a butterfly in Masquerade Madness. So the fact that they wanted to give Madison a butterfly when her first edition doll didn't have anything butterfly themed, to my knowledge, was a bit off for me. It was a bit like, hmm. But I still I like the aesthetic, so I can't complain too much. The biggest issue here, the two biggest issues, one, the fabric of the butterfly sort of corset looks cheap. From the imagery, it looks like it's paper and it should have been proper fabric. So I might retract my statement, you know, if if it ends up being different to what I'm saying, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. Looks cheaply made. And the thing is, why did they give each of them jackets, but not Madison? Because it looks like she's got something missing. It honestly looks like her doll is very lackluster. She was the one where Barbie, I would say, got probably uh, the most time. I would think Barbie's the one they thought about the most. Madison's the one that they were like, okay, we'll just give her this, 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 and this is kind of cute. We'll throw this together. That's how I feel. And so she definitely needed a jean jacket. Heck, they could have given her a really short jacket. If, if the people at Mattel thought it wouldn't look nice, leave that to the collectors. You know, if any of us didn't like the jackets, we just take them off our dolls. Simple. But she should have come with it because she looks like she's lacking. Barbie's is a regular size jacket. Chelsea's is large. So they could have given Madison a shorter one. That would have been cool. That's the thing that stands out here. Madison was sort of left, you know, oh, she's she's the third on the list. Okay, let's see what's left. That's what I'm getting. As much as her face and hair, thank God, is gorgeous. But overall, the rest, mm, she needed a bit more. So, yeah. Okay, those are my thoughts on the dolls. I have, though, one more thing to say before I, I get into... Oh, actually, no. We'll go straight to the cons, because this is included. So, the cons of these collector dolls. <clears throat> and again, I, I am very happy that we have something. And they do look decent enough. But the biggest con for me here is that, as much as I understand that these are reimaginings of the original three girls, is the fact that Noli's missing. That is the first one for me. And... For the years that I've been in the fandom, for the multiple polls I've seen and made, Noli almost always comes out as the fan favourite. And not by, you know, a little more than the others. No, still by a decent amount. Noli is such a beloved character. She wasn't there since day one, fair enough, but she was there since day two. Which is, you know, potato, potato, she was there since day two. Noli is such a beautiful character. I mean, they're all stunning, but Noli's such a a unique character, and for her not to be included here, which, knowing that this could potentially be the only collector's thing we get from my scene ever, it, it, it was, yeah, that is even more lackluster to me than the fact that Madison didn't get a jacket. So that is my biggest critique. Mattel, I'm so happy that you've given us something. I accept it. I thank you. But you should have given us Noli. And not only to mention that she also is amazing representation for so many collectors. Her aesthetic's beautiful. They could have given her the signature space buns. They could have given us something, you know, they didn't have to give us a, a reimagining of her spring break doll, which was her first one. Could have given us a completely new outfit or one that's made up of different pieces of stuff Noli's worn throughout the years. Add the space buns, maybe give her a fringe since the others don't seem to have one. You know, you could have you could have come up with something and given us Noli. She's a signature member of the group. And I compare, <laughs> I compare my scene without Noli to a donut without the jam filling. Sugary donut. It's nice, but something's missing. That's how I feel. Okay, so moving on from that. The next thing um, in terms of the cons, the boxes. So I love that they each have a symbol, thank God. But I think these boxes are very, very weak. They're very, they were very quickly made, pretty much. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
yeah, I would have loved if they were color coded. Barbies would have been red. Madison's, well, Madison's can stay the same, I guess, because it's already blue. Chelsea's yellow, or in this case, pink, because it seems they want to make her more pink based. And the boxes definitely should have, first of all, the dolls should have come with a second outfit. Let me just say that. Yeah. My scene dolls came with two outfits for the most part. So that was a big, big miss. And the box could have come with like a bio card for each girl. These are very easy to write up. I mean, if you go on my Instagram, you can see some of the, the, the images that I've made of, you know, collage work of my scenes and the, the bios that I've written from the top of my head. And I'm a fan. So Mattel, who actually made these dolls, they could have come up with this easily. If I can, so could they. And yeah, the boxes should have been better. Should have been better. The logo, personally, is my least favorite My Scene logo. Um, it's from the time where My Scene changed a lot. And although we had amazing things like Nia's introduction, we lost Noli, which was just ridiculous to me. Barbie got swapped out for Kennedy. A lot of Madison dolls from what I've seen, sort of lost the curly hair and ended up having a lot of wavy hair. It just, it was a different time. And in the sultry eyes, of course. But yeah, the boxes are very basic. They almost look like budget versions of what a collector's doll should look like. Now I will say, I'll, I'll be okay with this if Mattel make sure these dolls are mass produced. Or in other words, make sure they're easily obtainable for everyone. But, yeah, the dolls overall are quite basic in their look. So it's a little something Mattel gave us. They heard us. This is their way of saying thank you for still being a My Scene fan. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's something that not enough thought was put into, I think. And, and so, yeah, I think I've said everything. These are my thoughts overall on the imagery I've seen of the collector My Scene dolls. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, guys, if you agree with me, if you disagree. To round things up, I would say out of 10, I'm going to give it a 6. Maybe I can give it more, maybe less when I, when I get the dolls. What Mattel have to make sure is two things. One, these are easily accessible for everyone. And two, factory control. Do not dare give us the pixelated faces. This is the one time you guys will see me really angry. No, I say no to the pixelated faces. No, no one wants them. I have not seen a single person post that they like them. So don't you dare, Mattel. Other than that, <laughs> um, I'll take it. And, and I'm happy. I'm happy. At least we've got some symbols in the boxes because otherwise the boxes would just be bland as heck. The symbol gives it a little something. And yeah, I personally feel in my gut this might be the only collector thing we get from my scene but I do hope I'm wrong I hope Noli can join the gang and I have to of course mention Delancey for the big Delancey fans out there too but who knows let me know your thoughts let me know who are you gonna get or are you very much disappointed and are not gonna get any of them let me know your thoughts below thank you so much for watching and I want to wish all of you the best of luck in getting the dolls if you're gonna try and get any of them I'm gonna try We'll see and have an amazing day. Bye guys.